for committing illegal and unconstitutional acts. In 2003, the Department of Justice placed the Detroit Police Department on a federal overwatch that lasted 13 years. Can the Detroit Police Department pass the test? Department's Drug Unit. Good afternoon, I'm Alan Campbell. And I'm Glenda Lewis. A probe into wrongdoing found some officers stole from drug dealers, planted drugs on suspects, and even lied to prosecutors to get search warrants. This is part of an investigation launched back in August. And that's when narcotics officer Michael Mosley was indicted on charges that he took a bribe from a drug dealer. 7 Action News reporter Jim Cursor spoke to Chief Craig, and Chief fears that this could be actually just the tip of the iceberg. You can call it cops on a tape, bribery, it's criminal. Officer was in Lansing with his partner to participate in training by Michigan State Police on the use of a breathalyzer. And at one point, we're told he volunteered for a demonstration, perhaps not realizing that was a poor decision because he was drunk. This was a Michigan State Police training. Uh, he blew a point oh eight. Certainly, that's a problem. Bostwick will be off the payroll effective tomorrow morning. That's after he posted this photo to Snapchat with the caption. Here's the quote. Another night to wrangle up these zoo animals in reference to Detroit residents. Reported earlier this year, two white Detroit police officers were fired for humiliating this African-American woman. They had stopped for an improper plate, and made her walk home, turning it into this vile post on social media. Walk in the cold. Happened Wednesday night inside Detroit Receiving Hospital. The woman being punched in her head and face by the officer is suffering from a mental health emergency. She isn't wearing any clothing. She is yelling at the officers, biting hospital security, and spitting at the officers. And that's when the 18-year veteran corporal officer begins to beat her time and again. The officer's action has launched an investigation after a canine dies during training. Okay, disclaimer, warning, all you animal lovers, turn off the tape right now. You don't want to hear this. He was left on a treadmill and then found unresponsive. Sean Lay talked to Chief Craig this afternoon. Okay, let's do our 2019 police report card. So as you see, the police lie and steal, and they stay drunk. When you call the police, they come late or they don't come at all. When you drive down the street, they make sure they pull you over and give you a ticket. If you're afraid of the police and you don't stop your car, they'll get into a fast and furious car chase and crash you and kill half the people in the neighborhood and say they wasn't even there. For some reason, every year, we keep getting white police officers that hate black people, that love to live in the city of Detroit and abuse people. This is a common problem. I don't know, if you hate black people, why do you want to work here so much? Why don't you go to happy land? And this is the worst thing of all. They'll even kill a dog. Well, you get it. They get an E on the report card. It's time to go back into federal overwatch. It's, it's a done deal. Well, have a nice day. Don't stop for the police. Uh, facial recognition. And, uh, oh, yeah, welcome back to Detroit. We're on a comeback. Chief James Craig says the sergeant sat in his squad car after Corporal Rasheen McLean requested a supervisor. Craig says that supervisor did not go to the scene when officers were in a gunfight with the suspect. Later, McLean would be fatally shot. Another officer was wounded. As we did our investigation, we determined uh, allegedly that he did not go to the scene uh, when this shooting incident happened. 
Uh, we are aware and saw a video that supports that he did not go to the scene. Craig says based on body camera footage, the sergeant made no effort to get to the scene and take control. Your job is supervisor.